go to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we give you glory this morning, Father. We lift you up and we magnify your holy name. For you're worthy today, God, to receive glory and honor and praise and power, God. Father, we love you today. We ask you, God, to move in our midst today, God, in a mighty way. Father, anoint everyone that's here, God. Touch the brokenhearted. Heal the wounded today. Heal the sick today, God. In Jesus' name. Open blinded eyes today, God. We pray. Father, we pray that you anoint the praise and the worship. Anoint Pastor Bill as he brings forth the message today, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to go ahead and this morning and start by recognizing all of our birthdays for October. Let, let's celebrate this birthday. October anniversaries. Carry on now. Amen. Good job. Well then, those who can, please stand. Let's uh, and let's let's give God the praise and the glory that He so much deserves. Amen. Brother Ken, you can get that uh, tambourine to the for this verse. We'll get it right. Okay.
love with Jesus this morning, shall we? I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. I knew the life of the devil filled my soul. Oh uh-huh. 
when God created Adam, he breathed the breath of life into Adam. His breath is life, and his breath in us is life. Yes. Without his breath, we have no life. Um, Amen. Amen. God is the source. He's our source of life this morning. People exist, but they're not living if they don't know the Lord this morning. I just praise Him. Just praise Him for all the things that He has done and all the things that He is to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing this old song with us. The old ringing cross.
portion of what you have given us and blessed us with that to further your kingdom. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Speaks of himself as first and last. 
It is for our benefit and our understanding. <laughs> Jesus as first is my subject today. Many of you have listened to multiple sermons where I've spoken to you about putting Jesus first. Putting Jesus first. Well, so what do I mean, put Jesus first? The four things. Follow Jesus as Savior. That's how you put Jesus first. Seek His will over your own. Make a choice to obey all of His teachings. And never turn away. You see, when we come before God, and we come to Jesus and receive Him as our Lord and Savior, that's where a great, great struggle arises. It is at that time of salvation that the enemy begins his relentless attacks on your soul. Your enemy does not want you to follow Jesus and to put Jesus first. See, when we confess our sin, we ask God to forgive us. We believe in the miracle working power of the cross. That makes you Satan's enemy. In case no one else has told you, Satan hates you. That's right. He hates you. From the very moment of your salvation, this wicked, lying deceiver does everything he can to destroy your faith in Jesus Christ. But Jesus actually wants us to follow him. Matthew 19, 21. Matthew 19, 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all that thou hast, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. This rich young man came to Jesus. He says, What do I have to do to gain eternal life? And Jesus said, Just get rid of all the earthly things. Give it to someone else that needs it more than you do. But then follow me. Follow me. Mark 6, 1. Mark 6, 1. And he went out from thence and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. Jesus was going from one place to another place. And his disciples followed him. Now when you read this quite often, you might presuppose that it's only talking about the 12 men that we know as the apostles. But this wasn't just the apostles. This was all of his disciples at the time. You know, that one of the meanings of disciple is a follower. Is a follower. Luke 9.23. Luke 9.23. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily. Follow me. Follow me. John 10, 27. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And 
the last one is Philippians 3.12. Paul is speaking here. He says, Not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after him, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended for Christ Jesus. Following Jesus. Brother and sister, following Jesus is not easy. Following Jesus means that you've got a target on you and the enemy's taking aim at you. Following Jesus is more than something that just happens in your head or in your heart. Following Jesus affects you the way you think, it affects the way you feel, but it affects the way you do life. You do life. I'm not going to begin today to try and preach to you about how you should do your life. That's not my position as a pastor. My position as a pastor is to lead you to Jesus and help you to understand that you need to follow Jesus the way Jesus leads you to go. You need to walk with Jesus because, you know, there's a ministry that you have that no one else on the face of the earth has. There are people that you're going to represent Christ to in this world that you're going to be the only Christian they ever meet in their life. And it's between you and God that you have made the commitment to follow Him. Listen, obey, and follow. Now, if we're going to follow Jesus, we need to be ready to fight the fight. Amen? And I could go off here and preach about all the honor of God, and that'd be fun, but I think everybody in this room understands what the honor of God is already. You see, as Christians, following Jesus, we're going to face much affliction. Psalm 3419. Psalm 3419. You know this scripture? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Amen? Did you hear that last three letters? All? Our God is a delivering God. Now, to keep yourself strong, as you follow Jesus, despite the affliction or even the efforts of the enemy, you can seek His will over yours and thereby you will be putting Jesus first. So, how do we seek? How do we seek the will of God? How do we seek it? Number one, you pray. Psalm 27, 8. Psalm 27, 8. When thou sittest, seek ye my face. My heart said unto me, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. The psalmist is speaking to himself about himself. He was self-talk. He was encouraging himself. He said, I'm going to seek the face of the Lord. What did he mean? I'm going to seek the will of God. I'm going to seek the will of God. Matthew 6.10. Matthew 6.10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. We need to pray that way. Lord, what is your will for my life today? We need to pray that way every day. That's how we can learn and we can seek the will of God and discover the will of God and then apply the will of God to our life and to our ministry and to what God has called to. Luke 11, 9. Luke 11, 9. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Oh, I wanted to run off on one of my rabbit roads today, and I just wanted to preach and preach and preach and preach and preach about seek and ask and knock. And some of you might notice that I preach about those three things a lot. Amen? 
It's because it's important. But it's our privilege to just ask God. God, how would you, how would you have me serve you today? How can I best reach the lost today? Where can I go and what can I say and what can I do that will cause the greatest glory to rise up from my life before you today, God? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Something else we can do if we're going to seek is we can study. Amen? 2 Timothy 2.15, we all know that one. Study to show thyself and prove unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We learn, we study, we pray. Come on. That's how we find the will of God. We don't just get up one day and the Holy Ghost dumps the will of God into our head. Come on now. We're not puppets and God a puppeteer just pouring stuff into us when He wants to use us. We have a relationship with the Creator of it. Yeah. Now some didn't call the church is what I'm excited about. Come on. Amen. Think about it. The creator of all the universe, of everything that ever existed or ever will exist, wants you to have a relationship with Him. Yes. And not as a slave, not as a servant. He wants you to have a relationship with Him as a son, as a child, as heir to the great and mighty things that He turned to you. Amen. How do we learn? Matthew 11, 29. Matthew 11, 20, 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Come on, church. Oh, yes. oh learn of me. We've all heard or seen that thing. What would Jesus do? Brother and sister, I think a lot of people that use that what will Jesus do don't know a thing about the word of God. They don't know a thing about the word of God. And they think this is some some way to, to humble down the Christians and get the Christian. You know, someone I, I preached a sermon one time, not here at the church, but at another local church. And 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 I, I just mentioned in the in, in this in this sermon about uh, how that there's things that Jesus would rather we didn't get involved in. And I named them all, and I'm not going to do that for this morning. But one of the people who came up after the message was another preacher actually said, well, what do you think Jesus would do in these situations? And I said, well, I don't know. I think he would plant a whip and come into the church and turn over the money tables and kick out the, the, the people that are there for finances and he would restructure how we operate in what we call church. He said, well, I never thought about that. Jesus wasn't just a little doormat that walked along and let everybody kick him around. His life was laid down willingly for you and I. Amen. He volunteered to take my place and your place on the cross of Calvary. Because He loves us. Amen. The next thing we do after we pray and we study and we learn, we have to allow transformation. Somebody said, well, that's just the way I am. You'll have to accept it. Really? Or are you putting yourself in a dangerous place with that kind of an attitude? What if we had, what if what what if we had went before God and said, well, this is the way I am, God. You just have to put up with all of my language and all of my habits and all of my phobias and all of my hates and I don't think God would have welcomed us into the kingdom. We need to be transformed. We have to be willing to let the Holy Ghost transform us to be more like Jesus and less like us. 1 Peter 5, 6. 
first, first Peter 5, 6, backs this up. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And John 3, 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God doesn't want you to be an eternal victim. Amen. God wants to lift you up and build you up and encourage you and help you to be strong. Yes. Not just in your faith, but in your life. Yes. None of us know how this election is going to go. And we certainly don't know, whichever way it goes, how, where America's at. We don't know! If I was to tell you I didn't care, I don't think you'd understand what I mean. I care but I'm not going to let these things change my faith. Yes, my God is big enough to take care of me, no matter who it is in the White House. Right. And if nobody else tells you this, you're going to hear it today from me. The voters don't put those people in the White House. God sets the people that He wants in business and authority, whether it's the White House, or the Kremlin, or Iran, or is it? That's what the Word says. And I just believe the Word is right. Amen. Amen. I believe. So we follow God. We seek to do His will. And then we obey Him. Obey Him. Obeying God is a choice we can make. the more we obey, it builds trust. And as it builds trust, your faith actually grows stronger. Hebrews 5.9. Hebrews 5.9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey Him. Obeying Him is paramount. Acts 5.29 Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. What got Daniel in all that trouble and got him thrown into the lines <laughs> Because he chose to obey God instead of obeying man. His custom was to pray three times a day. He opened his windows towards Jerusalem and he prayed three times a day. And they passed an ordinance and said, If you pray, we're going to get in trouble. We're going to arrest you. He didn't deter them. And they arrested him. And they punished him. They threw him in a hungry den of lions. Didn't change anything, did it? Because even the people that passed the ordinances, that old wicked king that had him was so full of himself, who was the first one in the morning to go down and check out what condition he had in the wicked king? He might have just went down there to see how gory it was. You know what? Have you noticed how some people just feast on gore? Come on now. It's getting close to Halloween again and just looking around. Blood and guts and skeletons and witches and uh, I don't know where you are. And people go pay money to go through houses of horror. Luke 8, 25. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, 
and they were bringing him. Remember? Jesus said, Peace be still. And the rage of the sea was Because of obedience. The universe has no, what we call nature, has no choice but to obey. We have a choice. We can choose to obey God, or we can rebel. Zechariah 6.15, Zechariah 6.15. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass, if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. The prophets, all of the prophets, take any prophet you want. Their main message was to obey the will of God. If we're going to put Jesus first, we need to obey the will of God. And some people say, well, I don't know what the will of God is. What you're really saying is, is you haven't bothered to read the Bible. You haven't bothered to pray. You haven't bothered to learn. You haven't bothered to study. God tells us very clearly in His Word what His will is for all of humanity. Yes. 1 Samuel 15, 22. 1 Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Now as Christians, we need to follow the Lord. We need to seek God's will over our own. We need to choose to obey all of God's teachings. But there's still one more thing we must do. We must never turn back. Amen. Keep on keeping on. Yes. Luke 9, 62. Luke 9, 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. For me, it's Jesus or nothing. Jesus is not. 2 Peter 2.21 2 Peter 2.21 For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. There's a lot of talk about what we are doing. Be the rebel. But all oh, brother and sister, we must never rebel against the commandments of God. Amen. God's word says in sin, it's sin. I don't care how many preachers you can line up to tell you differently. I don't care how many denominations you can line up to tell you differently. I don't care for the whole world. The word of God is still true. Yes. Amen. And if God says it's sin, it's sin, and it'll always be sin. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12.25 Hebrews 12.25 See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. God speaks to you to warn you to prepare you, to enlighten you. Because God doesn't want you to suffer. God doesn't want you in a bad way. The last scripture that I have on this subject is Galatians 4.9. Galatians 4.9. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to weak and beggarly elements? 
where unto the desire of him to be confirmed. I don't need anything where the prodigal son ever went back to the pig pen. Amen? Amen. His father welcomed him back home after all of his self-indulgence, after yeah. all of his turning his back. He was welcomed home, but after he was welcomed home, he never went back. Come on, church. The world has nothing to offer you that's worth sacrificing your own soul. Nothing. Fame, wealth, power, authority. None of it's worth losing your soul. That's right. Brother and sister, I declare, we will not turn away. Yes. Would you say that with me today? I will not turn away from my God. Amen. 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 Satan hates hearing those things. Because people that will say them out loud usually mean it. And there's nothing you can do to change it. I will stay true to God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Now I want to show you some truth from Galatians 4. Seven verses in Galatians 4, beginning in verse 1. And I know I've used a lot, a lot of scripture today. But if you miss something or something doesn't quite register with you, Sister Nancy will have this thing edited and up on YouTube shortly. Galatians 4, verse 1. Now, I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, Different nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time of appointment of the Lord. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Sister Virgin coined it real good. There's somebody going somewhere. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus came under the law, He conquered sin in the flesh Amen. to assist you. I opened the sermon with Scripture from the book of Revelation. And I want to close today with a small repeat of some of those verses. Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Jesus is coming. And we, we, we see that word quickly in there and we stumble at it a little bit because we only have our interpretation of what quickly means. But I remind you again that Jesus created time for our benefit. <laughs> what we call quickly may not at all be what God calls quickly. And there's no reason for us to stumble over this. I was reminded of something that I preached in 2011 this morning in Sunday school. 2011. Just seems like yesterday to me. How quickly we've got to this place of being a senior citizen. I don't know who coined that term, senior citizen. When I was a kid, I couldn't wait to be a senior in high school. <laughs> And now I kind of feel 
a little bit of a put down when somebody calls me a senior citizen. Not, 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 very, not real bad. And it's, it's not the problem with being a senior. I just don't like that word senior. Mostly because of those senior moments that keep cropping up. Amen. Come on! Some of you know what I'm talking about. Verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega. Not I want to be, I could be. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. I started time and I'm going to close time. I'm the first and I am the last. <laughs> Glory. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. That city they're talking about is the New Jerusalem. Yes. Church, we need to keep Jesus first. Yes. Following through salvation. Seek to do his will and his life. Choose to obey and never turn Then we turned around 
And we started taking the mud that was in front of us and throwing it back on top of that piece of pipe that we had just put in. And that's how we install that pipe. An impossible task on the surface. But I want to tell you what benefit came out of tackling that problem with faith instead of with anger. And why me? It's not fair. Why do I have to do this? Don had been coming to church with me for a long, long time. But he had never accepted Jesus as his personal Savior. He was all worried about the end time, all the things that he had seen and heard about the book of Revelation. So when we had gotten down kind of where we were in a, a place where we were actually working back to back, I was throwing mud one way, he was throwing mud the other way. He started asking questions about what's going to happen with this person or that person or this group. Or, he, he was asking all these questions about Revelation. And, and I just kept working and finally I said, well, God, what difference does it make what's going to happen to all those people? He said, well, he said, because I don't want none of that to happen to me. And I said, well, God, it will if you don't give your heart to Jesus Christ and let him write your name in the land of the Lord. Silence. 16 feet down the curve. 116 degrees sun above our heads. We had been down there so long we had stopped sweating. Silence. And I turned around and dawn was warm. I said, what are you doing? I don't want to miss heaven. I want Jesus to save me. And right there in the mud, 16 feet down, Don fell on his knees and he asked Jesus to forgive his sin. And he asked Jesus to give him entrance into the kingdom of God. He asked God to change him. He said, oh God, change me. And my, but did God change Don? Within a year, he was a minister and he was a house parent on an Indian reservation raising Indian children who were orphans. And I raised yeah. them to learn more about Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, we can't turn back. We can't complain because life isn't fair. Who, where in the Word does it say life will be fair? It doesn't. But it says if you'll follow me, seek my face, and obey me, and never turn back, I'll go with you every step of the way. Take my yoke upon me and run me. Let's put Jesus first. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the word today yes. that you've imparted unto us. We ask you now, Lord, to multiply this word and cause it to go forward, not just to those that are assembled here, but to every person that sees it on Facebook, every person that sees it on YouTube. And Lord, help somebody somewhere to put Jesus first. Lord, we are weak. We are afraid. But you promised you'd go with us every step of the way. That you would be our comforter, our caretaker. So Lord, help us. Help us. Show us the way. In the areas where we're weak, we pray for strength. In the areas where we think we know it all, show us the truth. Yes. That we may truly, truly follow you and put you first. And keep us safe as we travel to our homes. Yes. Impart strength to each one. In the holy name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.